Hi everybody, Mel here, welcome back to my channel. I'm back from my holidays, back at work, going through all the emails that I received from you. Thank you very much, keep them coming. Right, so today I'd like to talk about why it's so hard to stop thinking about your borderline ex. It's the number one question I get asked from my clients and in emails, why can't I stop thinking about my BPD ex? I can't stop thinking about them. Why do I want to get back with them? even though I went through hell in the relationship. I want to give you my perspective, give you some insights. Bear in mind that these are just my thoughts. I'm happy to hear what you guys think. Please leave them in the comments below. Well, let's start with addressing that there is no relationship quite like dating someone with a personality disorder. All four of the cluster B personality disorders there's nothing there's no relationship quite like it okay for better or for worse it's so different to your typical neurotic relationship so i'm going to focus here on bpd relationships i'm well aware that no two people with bpd are the same i'm also well aware that it lies in the spectrum some people can just have traits some people can have full-blown bpd what i'm sharing with you is insights that i've gained from my experience from my training and from the experiences of all my other clients as well. So maybe, just maybe this resonates with you. There is no relationship quite like dating someone with BPD. It's very intense. It's a whirlwind romance that starts off well, quite intensely and can finish quite suddenly. And the partner who is left is wondering, what happened? What happened? And there is something about being addicted to your BPD X that plays into you not being able to stop thinking about them. You have to treat this like an addiction. When you are always thinking about someone, then it's hard to just suddenly stop thinking about them when the relationship ends. Now, bear in mind that people with personality disorders do want people to become addicted to them. MPD with BPD, for example, they want someone to be there, someone who can fulfill their needs, someone who can be a resource to them, whether it's sympathy, whether it's, I don't know, money, whether it's attention, they want someone to always, for someone to always be there for them. So they want you to become addicted to them, whether they're doing it consciously or not. So you as the partner of dating someone with BPD, it's very easy to become addicted to this partner and often they are beautiful people and you can see their pain in their eyes. You can resonate with their wounded inner child. In fact, perhaps your inner child resonates with their inner, inner child and it's easy to form this enmeshed relationship in which there are no boundaries. So if you come from a childhood in which your family didn't recognize you, if your family never praised you, never gave you a pat on the back, never said, good job, buddy. And then suddenly this beautiful person comes along and is telling you all the things that deep down you've been longing to hear all your life. And you feel seen, you feel wanted, you feel needed. It is so easy to become addicted and hooked onto this person because they are fulfilling a need for you that perhaps consciously you're not thinking of. You're just thinking that this person's the best person ever. I want to spend the rest of my life with this person. This person's my soulmate. But perhaps it's quite simply that they're giving you what you so sorely want. The problem with this is that it doesn't last for long. And it doesn't last for long in any relationships. As I said in many videos, in any relationship, regardless of whether they've got a personality disorder or not, it always starts off in a honeymoon phase where we have rose tinted glasses on, we are praising each other, we both put each other on a pedestal. And then after a period of time, we start to see them for who they are, flaws and all, and the relationship comes to a more stable ground where you can appreciate them as a human. Problem is, is that with BPD, it often starts with you being idealized and then you being devalued and after a while, the relationship normally finishes. So when your partner's left and you're stuck feeling all this pain, all this shock, this confusion, why has my partner just seemingly moved on so quickly? 
and here I am just I'm still attached the bond is still there for me it's so painful when someone who you shared so much with you've opened up your life to you've changed your life for this person you thought this person was your soulmate maybe and they've seemingly moved on so quickly and you're just alone you've been rejected you've been abandoned if this is a theme for you in the past if this happened to you in your family if this has happened to you with friends if this has happened to you in previous relationship then the pain of this is going to be so 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 intense so it's natural for your mind to want to long for the good times to reminisce about the good sides of your bpdx to latch on to the memories the earlier days where you were happy it's normal because your brain you want comfort you're seeking comfort to <sighs> soothe the suffering and bear in mind that with personality disorders they want you to become addicted to them they want you to always be there they want you to always be thinking about them because they need people to be around they need people to be a, a resource whether it's of sympathy of attention for you to just be there money perhaps sex whatever it is they want you to become addicted and you have become addicted to them it's hard to just suddenly stop that of course you're going to be thinking about them constantly and the cognitive dissonance that's going on with the pain of like how can someone who loves me just break up with me like this it means that you will be thinking of the good times wishful thinking kicks in the wishful thinking that yeah they they will get back in contact with me and we can make it work again and it will go back to how it used to be and it will be good maybe if i just change maybe if i do this maybe if i keep getting in contact with him or her maybe if i write this letter maybe if i do this or that then they realize that they've made a mistake and they'll come back to me wishful thinking is something that prolongs it prolongs <laughs> how long you keep thinking about them and dwelling about them and ruminating about them wishful thinking it's all part and parcel of denial is it not I recommend watching the video about the stages of grief and loss. Denial is the first thing. And this always happens when you are coming out of a relationship. It's really traumatizing to be dumped, to be rejected, to be abandoned by the person that you care so much about. And so wishful thinking means that perhaps seeing their potential and believing that, yeah, they're, they're going to be who I think they're going to be. You overlook all the times in which they let you down, all the times in which you were disrespected, devalued, because you're so latched on to wishful thinking. And the problem with this is that this is just going to keep you stuck in thinking about them and ruminating about them. At some point, you're going to have to realize that even if they are going to get back in contact with you, it's not going to be how it was. Your trust is gone. It's not possible for it to go back to the honeymoon stage. It's not possible. And the problem is, is that people with personality disorders, they will come back into your life at some point if they need you. Regardless of how this is impacting you, they may come back into your life because for whatever reason, maybe they feel lonely and they know that if they call you, you will pick up the phone because that's what you've always done. They know that if they perhaps send you some sexy photos, um, send you things in messages, emails to get your attention to play on your heartstrings because it's worked so many times before. Regardless of how bad this is for you, the fact that this is leading you on, they may not necessarily be want, they may not necessarily want to get into a relationship. And even if they do in the moment, this doesn't guarantee that they will stick to what they've decided. People with BPD are quite well known for changing their minds. Ambivalence is at the core of BPD. Ambivalence meaning wanting conflicting things at the same time, to be with you, to not be with you, forever changing their minds. I'm saying this for you as someone who has perhaps been dumped by someone with BPD. I'm saying this to wake you up from your denial, to wake you up from wishful thinking, to let go of wishing for them to get back in contact with you because if they do 
doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to feel better. In fact, I've heard from many others that if and when they do get in contact with you, each time they let you down, down again, each time you feel betrayed, it just hurts even more and even more. As I was saying earlier in the video, that if you haven't really had a love in which you were truly seen, if you weren't if you weren't seen in your family, if you weren't validated, if you weren't even appreciated in your family, you were just ignored, you know, then it's normal to be longing for the love that you've always wanted and your memories will go back to the last person who gave this to you. So this may be your borderline ex. So it's understandable why you'd be longing for them, why you'd be wanting to get back with them. But you have to think between the lines, what's, what's a deeper... What's the deeper reason of what's going on? Do I actually want to be back with this person? Or do I actually want to experience an unconditional love? Do I really deep down want to be in a relationship where I feel truly seen? Snapping out of wishful thinking, snapping out of fantasy and coming back into reality is what's going to help you speed up the process of letting go. It's important, it's got to be done. And I know it's really soothing. It gives you that dopamine hit to be wistfully thinking about your beautiful ex and how he did this or that, how you'll never have that again. And to be fair, it is actually kind of hard going back into a normal relationship afterwards because it can be quite thrilling. And it's strange to think that, isn't it? That in a relationship in which you were tiptoeing around someone who we couldn't predict what their behaviour will be like, Let's face it, it's actually quite a thrilling relationship at times. It's like someone who is so intense and, you know, quite free-spirited and to go from a whirlwind relationship back to a more stable one can actually seem quite boring. And we end up longing for the excitement, the danger that comes from uh, dating someone with BPD. Maybe another reason why you're struggling with forgetting about your BPDX is because he or she was a distraction from your own inner suffering. Perhaps you just weren't happy before this person came into your life and this person with their, oh, with their energy, with their stories, with their dramas, it was a wonderful distraction from your own drama, from your own melancholy, your own self-loathing maybe, and now they're gone and you're back with your own shitty life now and you're not happy with your life. So to overcome this, here are some ideas that maybe will help. Self-love. What does self-love mean to you? It means setting healthy boundaries and honouring your boundaries. What do, what do I mean by that? It means that deciding, you know what, I do not want to be treated this way. I do not want my ex to keep getting back in contact with me whenever he or she needs something. In fact, now I'm going to set a healthy boundary and say no, and I'm going to honour that and stick with that. And that is a form of self-love. And that is what builds confidence, self-esteem, self-respect. Self-respect is something that you so sorely need right now. If you've been dating someone who uh, keeps taking and taking and taking and taking, and you're giving and giving and giving. If this was a relationship which was very one-sided, now is the perfect time for you to set boundaries. Do it now, do it with this person. If this person's still in your life, if they're still getting back in your life, future relationships, get a, piece, get a pen and paper and write it down. Get a pen and paper and write it down. What are the boundaries that you so sorely need to put in place in relationships now? Think about times that made you angry in the relationship, okay? Your anger will tell you where you need to put boundaries. Anger is a very territorial emotion. When our space has been encroached one too many times, we get angry, okay? So this is when putting boundaries in place will stop that from happening again. And it builds self-respect. And you know what? The other person on the receiving end will learn to respect you from it. Mentally healthy people will respect that. And they will stick around and they will work with your boundaries, okay? People who 
aren't happy with you setting boundaries are going to kick up a fuss. They may kick, they may scream, they may try and shame you, they may ghost you, they may try and guilt trip you. You do not want these people in your life. Simple as that. Loving yourself is honouring the boundaries that you've put in place. Coming back to yourself, loving yourself, coming back to your needs, this will all help in you moving on from this relationship. Especially if your identity became enmeshed with the other, and this is something that is very typical of people who just don't know healthy boundaries in relationship, you lose yourself in this relationship. It's like your partner's desires, needs, values, were well, your needs and values, and now this person's gone and you're like, who am I? What do I want? Now's the time to figure it out, okay? You're not going to get it overnight, no one does. It's a journey, isn't it? It's a daily practice. Go out, go out into nature, you know, breathe fresh air, look at trees, go pick fruit, go forage, relax. Take time to uh, tend to hobbies of yours that maybe you put to one side because you lost yourself in this relationship. Write, read, watch inspiring documentaries or films. Do what it takes to come back to yourself. Focus on your needs and trying to figure out what your needs are, what your values are, what's important to you. And if there are blocks in you doing this, well, question these blocks. Why am I so resistant to coming back to myself? Is this because of past trauma? Maybe, maybe in your childhood, you were shamed for who you are. Maybe you were humiliated for your, I don't know, your values, your personality. And it's hard now for you to come back to yourself because you're so desperate to be seen. You've got to see yourself first if you want others to see you. If you want people to respect you, you've got to learn to respect yourself first. If you want to be loved, unconditionally loved, loved in a healthy way, then you're going to have to love yourself, love yourself unconditionally and learn to work on yourself. As I said earlier in the video, wishful thinking does kind of take over during the relationship and after the relationship ends, you need to force yourself to come back into reality, okay? To remind yourself that then coming back into your life is not going to make everything all better again. Only you can do this. Focus on yourself. All this time and energy that you've invested into this person, invest it back into yourself now. And if this was a one-sided relationship, then no doubt you've put a lot of time and energy into this relationship. You need to redirect it back to yourself, okay? You need to come back to yourself. And the only way you can do it is to force yourself to stop thinking about this person so much. Force yourself, all right? Like I said earlier, this is an addiction. You have to treat this like an addiction. You have to force yourself to stop thinking about them. There is no magical cure to make you suddenly forget, okay? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. If you haven't seen it, great film. There's a, this machine that just deletes your memories of your ex, but as the film shows that even this isn't really worth it, it doesn't really work in the long term, it creates problems as well. There is no magical cure to make you stop thinking about someone, you have to. You, you at your core, you at your innermost core are a place of consciousness and will. Will is the energy for you to, for action, for creating, to, to do something. You have to force yourself with your own inner will to stop thinking about them. Do what it takes. When the thought comes up, just send them, just have a thought, change the thought to, I wish you well, and then just drop it. Force yourself to drop it. Distract yourself. Download a game onto your phone. And this is great when I gave up smoking. When, um, I, ever, when I got an urge, I would play this card game on my phone. Um, it's one of those games where you have to overturn two cards and try and get a matching pair and cravings tend to go after 10-15 minutes apply this to yourself do something that will distract you okay these are the healthy kind of distractions to force yourself to stop thinking about this person when we are always thinking about someone which you know happens when you date someone with bpd 
your mind forms a very um, grooved circuit of which on impulse you start thinking about them and now you need to create a new circuit. You need to move the energy away from this old circuit and you have to force yourself to stop thinking about them. But you need to do this when the thoughts start picking up right at the beginning, because if you start ruminating, then energy follows thought and it's harder to stop. So force yourself, distract yourself to stop thinking about them. Only you can do this. Read a book, go outside, play a card game, watch TV, watch something funny. Call your friends, go for a walk outside, have a shower. There are so many things that you can do. It's when you say I can't stop thinking about them, yes, you can stop thinking about them. You just don't want to. And I know it's hard at the beginning. I know it's hard because an impulse you want to think about them. But only you can stop this. You have to choose to, you have to feel the desire to. And so what can motivate you to stop thinking about them? To think about yourself. Think about what you want in life now. Think about improving yourself. Who am I? Who am I after this relationship? Well, who do you want to be? All right? Let this take up your time and energy. Get back into work. Focus on hobbies. Do what it takes. And it will get easier over time. Right, I'll leave it there. Like I said earlier, leave me your thoughts below. And if you can resonate, if you're struggling with a breakup and you want some one-to-one -one counselling, get in contact with me. Maybe I can help. Uh, my email address is in the description box below and I look forward to hearing from you all. Alright, until next time, bye bye for now.